Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's Identity Masterclass webinar on integrating human resources systems with your identity management system. My name is Martin Gill, Senior Architect at Coacho. I work primarily within the identity practice, as well as external identities, which includes B2B and B2C, as well as security. And I'm also joined by Tom as well. Hello everyone, so yep, I'm Tom Irwin, an identity architect at Coach Show, also in Martin's identity team, uh, but uh, work on and work on similar projects, but also uh, related governance uh, and other services within Azure. So today we are here to discuss how Microsoft Azure AD services can be used to empower your human resources department with employee identity and access lifecycle. During this webinar, we will go through a quick overview of the services, which will include HR-driven provisioning, identity workflows, entitlement management, and identity governance, as well as providing details on a, a recent case study and what Coach Show can offer you as well today. The end-to-end -end life cycle includes the HR-driven provisioning service, which primarily includes the human capital management integration and providing the identity life cycle. There's also identity workflows, which is about the account workflows for your onboarding and offboarding tasks. Entitlement management for providing access lifecycle to your resources and a end-to-end -end lifecycle for your contingent workers like visitors or temporary staff. And identity governance for your recertification and compliance needs. Today's primary focus will be on HR-driven provisioning and we'll provide um, a brief overview on the other services and in a future webinar we will go into those in a bit, a bit more detail. The benefits of using these services includes increased productivity by automating the provisioning tasks, birthright access, so based on the role that you have you're provided the access that you need for day one, as well as being able to um, have your employees being productive on day one. Security benefits. So HR driven access um, is crucial as the authoritative source of data for your human resources. Automated deprovisioning, when access is no longer required, it can be removed and revoked automatically. And access governance for your recertification and compliance needs. And finally, efficiency savings. So reducing cost by reducing your manual processes with automation, and avoiding inefficiencies, and eliminate error-prone manual provisioning. Now over to Tom to talk about um, the HR provisioning service. Thank you, Martin. So yeah, as mentioned, the main focus of today is of course HR provisioning. There's a lot of uh, related elements of course, to, to go into, but as we say, we'll, we'll go into those in a bit more detail another time, but we will cross those uh, after this as well. Um, so today we, or Azure fully supports Workday and success factors. Uh, there are more options coming soon. Um, there's also additional features or options available already using the Acara onboarding bridge, uh, the last point there. So um, that supports other HR providers as well as other services if, if that's um, something that you, you need to use. Um, so we can, of course, uh, write these user objects directly into Azure AD, but if you have on-premises Active Directories, we can also support those, including multiple domains. Um, in that case, you're actually writing the users into the Active Directory on-prem via an AD, Azure AD service, uh, but it's actually Azure AD Connect that writes those users into Azure AD in that instance. From that point forward, then, you, we can write attributes back into your HR service. So most commonly uh, used are the email addresses of your users that typically generated in Exchange Online, populated in Azure AD, and then they can be passed back to, to the HR service. Uh, other attributes you could use is perhaps a phone number from Teams or from another source that, that's populated in the uh, Azure AD profile. Uh, with the supported apps at least and some others, uh, there are enterprise applications in the Azure marketplace. So you don't actually need to create any custom apps. Um, so you know, a standard integration can be set up with uh, minimal configuration, um, but there is support for more complex scenarios, of course, as I say, multiple domains, uh, but you can also write expressions in your provisioning rules um, to, to fully customize them as you need to. 
So again, what we're talking about here is, is making things more seamless. And uh, of course, automation is a big part of that. And with HR as the source of truth, the source of your authoritative data, uh, you can be sure that you know that's being entered correctly and in a timely manner by your HR teams um, to be you know in order to create those accounts in your directory services, typically ahead of the user's start date. Uh, they can be just created as a disabled user and then enabled uh, when required on the first day. Um, and as mentioned as well, the birthright access piece means you know you can automatically give them the the basic rights or whatever rights you define for that particular you know user group or role. Um, so that they can be productive on the first day. Additionally, uh, movers can be uh, catered for. So if we're, you know, if we're recognising attributes to give access, so for example, departmental changes or job title changes or whichever attributes you really want to use, you can automatically put people into those groups that they need um, uh, or access packages perhaps, uh, and they can automatically, of course, gain the new access they need and remove any access they should no longer have in, in their new role or, or location. Um, critically, when a user is terminated in the HR system, of course, we want to, you know, in real time, disable those users in your directory services. Um, so that's obviously an important piece here. Um, and, and also important is any connected services. Um, so any, you know, single sign-on integrated services in Azure or any other linked services to the Microsoft world will automatically be blocked, of course, along with their main AD accounts. Um, and if you have skin provisioning set up, you can also be deprovisioning those users in the various systems you have connected uh, with skim uh, the moment that, well, soon after the, the user has been disabled by, by HR. It's critical, though, that uh, you do a lot of discovery before you go ahead with this project. Um, we, you know, it should be seen as a business project. This isn't just an IT thing. Um, so get those, you know, stakeholders involved at an early stage, especially from HR. They're going to be a big part of this, uh, and it's, you know, it's beneficial to all the teams involved. So, you know, get that discovery done. They may even offer some insights to things that are done in ways you didn't expect um, to, to obviously smoothen the process. Um, so, yeah, do discovery, document your JML processes, and uh, make sure you know all your ducks are in a row before you, you get going. So there are different deployment approaches. Um, this is a relatively simple one that we've discussed already. So this is, in this example, we have Workday as the HR source, um, and we have an on-prem AD. So that will go, so the data from HR um, that we've you know, allowed to go through will pass through Azure AD as, as the connector, uh, and then be provisioned into AD on-prem. Um, and then the purple lines there, the right back flow. So the, the first piece, from AD will be with AAD Connect, so that pushes the users into Azure AD. Uh, and then finally, Azure AD can write attributes back into your HR system. So as we mentioned, the email address, perhaps phone number, any other attributes that, that you want to use. Uh, and therefore, your, you know, your HR, your Workday system can be um, kept up to date as well. So there's a number of challenges, of course, uh, in, the, in the, the way things have been done in the past. Um, so, you know, all of this can be mitigated uh, moving forward. So, you know, we want to make sure we're only flowing the data that's required. We don't want to flow every single user necessarily. We don't necessarily flow all of their attributes. So that's something we can do. Uh, and then we can ensure data integrity, of course, um, because we're, we've, we've set up rules to do so. Um, at the top there, of course, multiple HR, HCM instances can be catered for as well. So no worries if you have regional um, disparities. Um, and it's important, of course, that you're able to test in a non-production environment first. So, you know, there are allowances here for you know, doing dev and test and user acceptance testing uh, with the business before you move into, into production. Um, and keeping customizations and, you know, filtering and data transformations to a minimum so that can help uh, reduce your technical debt. Um, and, you know, we also want to make sure that we are sending alerts to groups of users so that people are aware of any issues, not just uh, a single admin or, you know, getting lost in the ether. Uh, we may like to set up things like accidental deletion thresholds um, just to, to cater for any uh, mistakes. So what does all of this mean? Um, well, I, I guess you're, you probably heard it already, but we're, we're talking about, you know, removing or reducing human errors here because automated systems following rules generally work as they should. Um, we're also saving resource time as well because, you know, these menial tasks can bog down your, your IT teams and your service desks. So by, you know, automating these, of course, there's, there's more time freed up for other tasks. 
Um, and it's about that, you know, just, um, being productive on day one, as we say, the, the birthright access so people can can instantly start working. They don't have to wait around for, for additional tasks to be done. Uh, data integrity is important. As we mentioned, you know, HR generally know what they're doing, so they're going to put the right data in and you can be sure that's passed to your various apps in a timely manner. And security are happy too, because, you know, not only uh, is the data correct, but uh, access has been provisioned correctly, and most importantly for them, probably deprovisioned. Um, so that's that's good for, for those teams as well. Uh, and of course, your IT teams are going to be happier as well, because ultimately not many people like doing the standard tasks like creating accounts and adding access and simple things. So, you know, freeing up time for, for more exciting things. So in the end, you can be more productive, you can give access on day one, and there are cost saving benefits to all of this. Longer term, you're looking at um, some, you know, a lot of reduction in, in overhead. Uh, and all of this, of course, can be combined with additional features that we're going to talk about now, such as uh, lifecycle workflows. So back over to, to Martin. Cool. Thank you, Tom. So we now have um, identity workflows, which is a preview feature or capability that came out a few months back. And this enhances your, the lifecycle by automating the onboarding, offboarding tasks that you may typically have for your employees. So, for example, uh, a new employee starts, they might, there might be a requirement for a, a, a new starter email or a temporary access pass for the users to be able to log in on the first day or for the, the users to be added to, to groups or teams so that on day one they have access to the data that they need to be able to work um, and work with the team that they've just joined. All of these um, tasks are centralised, so you can create and manage all of the tasks in one place. Um, it enables scalability for organisational growth, and reduce and potentially remove manual tasks um, by automating um, the automating with the out of the box tasks. Um, but there's also possible to create your own custom tasks with extensibility with the use of Azure Logic apps as well. There's also lifecycle beyond just attributes. So um, a trigger can take place so many days before an employee hire date, so access can be granted ahead of day one, um, as well as also doing the same for when someone leaves, so access can be removed or tasks can take place um, as someone is coming to the, the end of their, their life cycle journey. Um, identity workflows includes uh, the different tasks that you can create, um, triggers for when something, for when, a, a ta for when the tasks take place, as well as the scope um, so who is then actually who is actually the recipient of those um, tasks? So you can have different um, tasks for different roles within your business. We then have entitlement management, which is all about automating access lifecycle to resources within your organisation, and this can include again groups and teams, applications, and SharePoint sites. And this can be surfaced through the, the My Access portal, which is a self-service request fulfillment um, web portal where users can go in and request access. Um, an access package um, has a life cycle with expiration and users can have the ability to extend access as they're coming to the end of their uh, request fulfillment. There's also extensibility with Azure Log um, applications as well. So at each stage of an access package, whether it's being the request stage or the approval stage or coming to the end of an access package, you can have a custom task be triggered. There's automatic assignment as well as dynamic entitlement using groups. So again, based on the data that you have from your, your HR systems or from other sources, you can automatically assign access to your applications or data um, if you want to as well. And using this service, you can provide a life cycle to your contingent workers. So these are the, the guest user accounts within Azure Active Directory um, that you might provide to visitors or for temporary staff where they just need access to a limited set of resources for a short amount of time. Um, this can provide the automated life cycle for those scenarios. Overall, entitlement management reduces and potentially um, removes manual access provisioning and deprovisioning tasks. And finally, we have recertification with identity governance for your compliance needs. 
This includes access reviews using, again, the, the My Access web portal, and it can provide uh, recommendations on where access should maybe be revoked where um, a user has not signed in for 30 days. You can set frequency of the access reviews to daily, weekly, monthly, yearly. Um, it's it's customizable as well as the duration of the access review as, as well. There's options to automatically apply results and take actions. So for example, if a access review is missed, you can have it automatically apply results based on recommendations. Um, and if you want it to automatically take actions like removing access, it can do that as well. And Access Reviews directly integrates with the different Azure resources, um, predominantly access packages, groups, teams, and more. We've gone through the end-to-end the -end life cycle of services provided by Azure AD, starting with the HR-driven provisioning service, which provides that, that foundational identity lifecycle solution. Identity workflows, which enhances that with automating your standard onboarding and offboarding account tasks. Attachment management for providing access lifecycle to your various resources within your organization. And identity governance for your recertification and compliance needs. Now over to Tom, who's going to talk about a recent client success story. Thanks, Martin. Um, so yeah, here you see one of our recent client success stories. So this is a large healthcare provider. Unfortunately, we can't name them, uh, but it's a good example, especially in a large organisation. You know how much uh, benefit that can be gained because you know the more users, uh, leavers, joiners, movers, etc., that you have, of course, the more overhead there would be, the more mistakes that can be made. Uh, so again, all of the things we've talked about can can bring some real benefit to to an organisation of any size, but in particular a large one, of course. They, they're getting even further wins from it. Um, so yeah, good example there of, of what can be done. So what are the next steps? Well, uh, we're now offering a free HR provisioning assessment. So you are, you know, if you're interested, we can you can get in touch with one of the Cocho team. We've done this many times before, of course. You know, we want to support you in your identity and access lifecycle journey. You know, to create that synergy between HR and IT. And we also have offerings around managed support services and longer term options. So based on you know, our experience and, and some calculations we can make, we were able to give a, a sort of a, a standard offering, a package based on, on your details and requirements. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, do, do let us know. And reach, we can, you can reach out at the address at the bottom there. Uh, and of course, we do offer the other services we've mentioned as well. So if you're interested in any of the other things we've talked about today, uh, or to fill in any other gaps that you're missing, you know, we can we can also offer other packages there. We do have some standard offerings for the other elements uh, as well as HR. Cool. Well, thank you everyone for joining and, and listening in um, to our webinar today. Um, I guess this is now the, the opportunity for any questions that you might have. So please, can you put your questions in the GoToWebinar um, questions um, panel, and we can then run through any questions that you have. So there's one here, Martin, on licensing. Uh, what what Azure licensing is required for the offerings? Yeah, of course. Um, so the HR provisioning um, requires Azure AD Premium Plan One, um, and the other capabilities. So that's the um, identity workflows, the entitlement management, and the access reviews, those all require Azure AD Premium Plan 2. Okay, thanks, Martin. Um, and multiple HR uh, providers. So, yeah, we can, you can have multiple, you know, they, they need to be a supported product or via one of the, uh, the, the Acara bridges or in future perhaps other products. But if you do have multiple HR instances, certainly of Workday, and or um, success factors as it is today, you can connect multiple uh, HR providers into one Azure AD tenant um, or multiple, of course. But yeah, that is that is supported. Cool. I will give it another another minute for any other questions, and then I think we'll we'll wrap up. 
Okay, I think we're good to continue. Yes. Um, actually, there is a question that's just come through. Uh, can you implement job descriptions based access control? Um, so, I, I guess if the attribute can be made available into Workday or success factors and flowed into Azure AD, that could be a, a custom attribute or an extension, or it could just be um, job title, for example. And those can then be used in criteria based groups to then grant access. So, yes, as long as the, the data is available and it can go to either an out of the box Azure AD attribute or um, a custom attribute, there are extension attributes as well that are available, there's 15 in total, and those can then be used to um, dynamically grant access. Cool, well, if there's no other questions, um, will we get a copy of the slide? So um, yes, there will be um, on-demand information sent out um, after this session. So yes, the recording will be available as well as the slides, I believe. Cool, um, so the next slide is um, just some quick links to also provide some more information on each of the different services. Oh, no sorry, Mark, there is one more question there um, that's come through. So uh, is, is suspension to access automated directory through Workday? Um, so I guess if you mean, the, the, uh, if it's all connected correctly, if you mean are they disabled in the various systems when disabled in Workday, then yes, they would be, um, as long as it's set up in the right way. Yep, that's right, yeah. Okay. Cool, thank you. Um, and yes, here are the, I'll put it in the chat window now, there's the, the different links for you to easily click on as well for each of the different services that we've spoken about today. Um, and there will be um, other webinars where we will go into a bit more detail on identity workflows, entitlement management and identity governance as well. Cool, so um, yes, thank you today uh, for joining. Um, our contact details are on the screen, so you can reach out to us directly regarding any of the capabilities or services that we've spoken about today. Um, or if if you want to, you can also contact us through the, the website or the, the hello email address there as well. Thanks, Martin, and thanks, everyone else. That's great. Thank you all for joining. Cheers, all.